Ladies and gentlemen, I am Silent Mike. Welcome to the video. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss a video, and give this thing a thumbs up. I appreciate you all for hanging out today. We got a little bit of training footage with the voiceover, obviously, so I can have a chance to chat with you guys. A lot of you have been asking uh, after the videos with the muscle doc or just in general with kind of updates on my back. Uh, it's doing a little bit better. I tweaked it maybe four to six weeks ago. It was not feeling awesome. Um, I've been sleeping on the ground uh, instead of a bed. Uh, you heard that maybe helps, and it, it has been helping. Sometimes I think my hip sinks into the bed. And then you kind of get a, a curvature on your side uh, that maybe tightens up my erectors and my QL and uh, my hip flexors. Uh, I've also been trying to stand or lay more than sit uh, as my hip flexors and everything was getting really tight. So I'm just kind of showing you guys some of my workout, uh, some of the warm-up <clears throat> that I've been doing. And then also I've had um, my man, the muscle doc, help me out with um, that hopefully can not only um, balance me out, you know, his main thing that he believes is wrong is some pelvic stability issues, uh, and I have no reason to disagree. Uh, you know, I don't think my glutes are uh, weak or anything. Um, I breathe and brace really well. Um, if I do say so myself, I have pretty dang decent technique, so I don't think um, I have any issues. I, I lift insanely submaximal. so ladies, <clears throat> if you don't like that thrust right there, I don't even know what you're doing here, all three of you. Um, so we got a little bit of squats here. I guess the main topic of the video is, I guess, the injury stuff, but you can refer back. Uh, we can maybe do a whole video on that. Comment below if that's something you would like to get into, kind of injuries, how to figure it out if you're injured or hurt, um, and then what to do. But what I really want to talk about is kind of how to rebuild. Uh, the conversation not only comes into play when you're kind of injured, uh, but it comes into play maybe when you had a vacation or some people mentioned they've been studying for some finals and had to take two to four weeks off of the gym. Uh, maybe you've taken years off the gym of powerlifting and strength training and you want to get it back in uh, or you've simply been sick or, or traveling like I mentioned. So how do you get back in? Uh, I think there's multiple ways. Uh, if you're just kind of sick, uh, took a break, something like that, you know, something kind of linear is a, a really good way to get back. You know, if your best squat ever is maybe 500 pounds, you could probably linearly progress from 225 to maybe even the uh, 400 or mid 400s uh, without having any issues. Um, you don't lose strength or muscle uh, as fast as you may think. You know, people take a week or two weeks off the gym. They're like, oh man, I lost an inch on my arms and my PRs, uh, you know, 100 pounds less. Even though you may not be able to display that strength in the same manner, you may not be able to just hop back in the gym and squat your PR. You actually didn't lose strength. You're just not um, prepared or in the fitness, in shape uh, to display it right then. But the strength, the muscle, and things like that, it takes much longer for them to actually deteriorate. If you've been sick, you're going to feel weak. Obviously, you've been in bed. Uh, Hydration is going to be a factor. Sleep is going to be a factor. And your body has been battling a virus or disease for a while. Uh, so you're just going to feel weaker than you actually are. If you've been traveling, similar thing. You've been sitting a lot. Hydration with going up in the elevation <clears throat> uh, can really jack things up, as well as posture of a new bed, uh, new sleep schedule, and the sitting itself. So feeling weak and being weaker are very different. Of course, when you come back in the gym, you will feel weak 100%. It's going to be the case. Um, but to build that back up, I've talked about also the squat every day method is something that I do um, think works well for some case like this, where you can take the time uh, and squat or deadlift or even bench um, with a higher frequency as you're getting back into the gym to build back up kind of that baseline of strength. So for me personally, um, because of the injury, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, what I did is I am raising the intensity linearly, um, but I can't take the battle of the frequency over and over just because my back is still iffy. So I have my frequency moderate, two or three times a week squat, one or two deadlift, and two, uh, or excuse me, three to four bench. Obviously, my upper body's fine. Uh, but what I am doing is I'm linearly progressing. So I'm just adding weight every week. Uh, this week, I can't think of what my triple is. Maybe it's around 400. Then I did around 425, 455. This week, tomorrow actually, I'm going to try to do 475 for a triple. Um, for me and my back issue, uh, it's mostly the volume uh, and the wear and tear that's beating me up. Um, 
whether it is that pelvic stability or just knots or tightness or back spasms or whatever the case may be, that's actually limiting me. Again, if you're sick, vacation, coming back from the gym uh, from years off or a month off, uh, I do suggest something like squat every day. And what you could basically do is just work up to something like an RPE 8 or 9. Um, that's uh, out of scale of 10, rate of perceived exertion, which basically means how difficult it is. Typically, a set of uh, you know, a single at RPE 8 means that it's something you could do for three reps or so, but you're only going to do a single. Um, you could also do some little back down sets there. Uh, and you can kind of do that for maybe two to three weeks straight, build back up again, like I said, to almost near your max, and then kind of get into a program with a little bit more volume, a little bit more evened out frequency uh, to allow yourself to recover and progress properly. Um, that's my suggestions coming back kind of uh, maybe not so much from an injury because it can beat you up. Uh, obviously, you need to be a little bit more precautious coming back from an injury, but coming back from sickness, travel, etc., rebuilding your strength, uh, adding a, a couple of weeks of really high frequency can help you not only get back into practice, dust off that um, rust, and also build that strength back very quickly so you can continue to make lifetime goals because hopefully we're trying to progress all the time, uh, not just get back to where we were, kind of one step forward, two steps back is a terrible way to live. Um, actually, I'm pretty happy with my bench, little update on the bench programming. So I am benching three times a week. Uh, right now I have two competition bench days. Uh, and then this day you're seeing right here is a little bit more of a closer grip day. Uh, some of you guys say, oh, that's not that close. When I say close grip, typically I just mean closer than your normal grip. I'm typically uh, index or middle finger on the rings. And right here, if you can see, my pinkies are maybe two inches inside the rings. Um, I have a day, I think that was 315 for five or maybe four, which is pretty dang close to a PR, uh, especially for my close grip work. Uh, I think my best ever is maybe six close grip and about nine or 10 regular grip. So I'm feeling pretty solid. Uh, if these look funny or weird to you, it's because I'm kind of trying to do like a mini lat, uh, straight arm lat pull down and a uh, chin up at the same time. Uh, I don't know why my camera sucks, but I was doing a tripod by myself. I'm just doing a superset with face pulls, trying to build up the rear delts, uh, rotary cuffs, and my traps. Um, on the other two bench days, I'm doing one day that's a little bit more higher volume, a little bit more hypertrophy based, where I'm doing three sets of anywhere from 10 to 12 with slow progressions over time, competition grip, and then another day where I'm working up to maybe a heavy single, double, or triple with some back down sets of triples. Uh, this close grip day is always kind of between the, the rep ranges of five to eight. Um, so daily undulating periodization, common word thrown about in the powerlifting and strength world. But basically what it means is throughout a week, you're going to be training the same lift in multiple rep ranges. And I do believe for not only in an off season, uh, but often when you're peaking as well to test your one rep max, that keeping some level of fatigue or base in different rep ranges will help stimulate different muscles as well as allow you to continue to keep that fatigue up until it's time to take it away and Test that one rep max. If you guys like the voiceover, if you like the raw training footage, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. I do appreciate you guys. All the support has been great. Head down, chin up, my friends. Salam, Mike. I'll catch you in the next video.